So one other inductive effect that we have to take into place is uh, an effect that affects mostly supply and ground lines, specifically supply and ground pins. And the reason we have to talk about impedance, about inductance in this case, is that the supply and ground pins observe very large current slew at some points, and also they observe very large metal areas. So you can see a large metal area on the bonding pad used to bond uh, the pin. You can see a large metal area in the wire used to connect the bonding pad to the pin. But the pin itself is a huge metal, uh, metal uh, body and the PCB track is even larger. Uh, the more area, the more inductance. So this affects ground and supply as well as all other pins. But on ground and supply in specific, it can lead to a very dangerous phenomenon called ground and supply bounce. And um, ground and supply bounce have to do with the fact that supply and ground pins have to source and sync all the current that everything in the circuit is uh, doing. So if you look at the circuit, there are many, many gates charging and, pre and discharging. Any gate that's charging is ultimately going to charge through the external supply. Any gate that is discharging is ultimately going to discharge to the external ground. And so these pins are sourcing huge currents and are sinking huge currents. So that's a problem because we observe very large currents. But what makes it even more uh, dangerous is that we observe very large rates of change of current. So this current could be rising really quickly and then dropping really fast. If the current was high, but it was constant, we would be worrying about resistive losses uh, in, in these lines. And that's a much easier problem to deal with. But we are worried about the fact that depending on the activity of the circuit, in specific at some uh, points like turning it on or turning it off, depending on the activity, you will see the current rising and falling by huge amounts. So what we are worried about specifically is the slew, the, the slew rate of the current, di by dt. It's not that the current is changing by large amounts or that it's changing at high frequency, it's that it's both. It's changing by high amounts within reasonably short periods and that gives us a large di by dt. And the worry is the voltage drop that we leave over an, uh, an inductance is proportional to di by dt rather than i. So this is much worse than having a resistive effect. So this is the main thing that we are worried about. It's that there's a large inductance that we see uh, at the ground and supply. And so the true level of supply VDD, true, the true ground at zero volt, is not necessarily the ground or supply values that you observe at the core of the chip. The, these L's come from two sources, on-chip sources and off-chip sources. If you look here, the main on-chip source is the bonding pad uh, and a bonding wire. Uh, off-chip sources, you can say pins are kind of off-chip or on-chip, depends on how you uh, view it, and then the PCB track. But this is going to make uh, the, the value of, so of supply and ground observed by the chip not only not the ideal value, which is what you would observe also with a resistive uh, loss, but also variable with time. And so what we end up observing is that the true uh, value of, v of, of supply VDDT is almost never observed at VDD for the chip. Instead, we see it bouncing up and down depending on how current is flowing and same happens to be the case for ground. So we are worried about this because it makes us have to deal with values of supply and ground that are different from the ideal values. But if you also uh, look up the video for uh, latch up, you'll see that changing supply and ground values are very dangerous because they can trigger latch up. So this is something that we really worry about and we have to address. And the way we address uh, ground and supply bounds is by adding a decoupling capacitor. So this is a capacitor that connects the supply and ground nodes and um, it should ideally be as large as possible. Now the question is, is this capacitor uh, created on chip or off chip? If it's created on chip, then it's going to actually 
protect us from bounce due to on-chip inductance and off-chip inductance. If it's created off-chip, it's only going to protect us from off-chip inductance. But for, for decoupling capacitance to work properly, it has to be very large, which makes it challenging to include it on-chip because you are going to have to basically waste a couple of metal layers to create it. Um, so it's a trade-off. Now, how does the coupling capacitor work? Uh, I'm going to explain the main idea, and then we're going to look at it in more detail. But the coupling capacitance, as a, as a value of capacitance, it's really high. Uh, its impedance is actually proportional to, uh, inversely proportional to the value of capacitance and to the operating frequency. So if the frequency of, op of operation is zero, we basically see an infinite impedance from this capacitance. But if we see high frequency operation, then this capacitance starts to have a really, really low impedance. So the higher the value of capacitance, the better off we are in terms of this, you know, dichotomy between the impedances seen. And so what's going to happen is if there isn't much current being sourced or drained in the circuit, uh, then there's really not, or, it, or if the current flowing through these pins is constant, meaning it's a DC current, then there really isn't um, any drop on the inductances, and we are not seeing any bounce. When in that case, you're dealing with a DC current, a constant current, and therefore, this capacitance is going to be pretty much non-existent. It's going to be an open circuit. However, if you start to see large slews in these currents, they start to change with time, then this capacitance is, is going to start to have a very low impedance, which makes it much easier for the current to go to the capacitance instead of going to the, to the inductance. And thus the capacitance is going to absorb a lot of the charge coming from this current, and then it's going to discharge it through the impedance to ground or supply slowly. So let's take a look at a specific case. Here we are um, looking at only bounce on ground, and we are ignoring bounce on supply for, for, a, for a second. But everything we say here is going to apply equally to, um, to the supply pin as well. So now the current being sourced from the, from the chip, which is I, uh, by KCL is going to be divided between IC and IL the current in the inductor and the current in the capacitor. And the main thing here is how much of the current goes to the capacitor, how much goes to the inductor, depends on the frequency of the, of, of the current. So it depends on its slew rate. So let's assume that there's a, a large uh, change in current, a peak like this. So this is the uh, uh, total current being sourced from uh, the chip. So uh, at this first step, what's going to happen is that most of this current is going to go to the capacitor. And so basically, we are seeing a very large slew rate for, for current. So di by dt is large. And because the impedance of the inductance is proportional to frequency, the impedance that this current observes in the inductor is going to be large, which is the orig original problem that we had to deal with, right? So this large current is then going to observe a small impedance in the uh, capacitance, on the other hand, and so it's going to prefer to go into the capacitor. Now, once that happens, though, um, and the current has settled uh, and accumulated enough charge on the capacitor, um, then this voltage, this uh, voltage that has been created on the capacitor, becomes a DC voltage. Now, it's going to be a small voltage because we have a large capacitor, which is why we need the decoupling capacitor to be large. And so we don't observe as much of a bounce on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, on the pin as we saw with the inductance. Recall that uh, V for, uh, for the capacitor is the integration uh, of current, whereas V for the, inductor, for the inductor is the differentiation of current. And therefore, uh, the capacitor, if it's a large capacitor, is going to even out the voltage and it's going to give us a small voltage. Now, this accumulated charge is going to leak through the inductor, but it's going to leak a, at a small, at a slow rate. 
because it cannot remain on the capacitor. If it remains on the capacitor, it starts to observe a very large impedance on the capacitor, and it starts to think of the impedance of the inductor as uh, more attractive. And therefore, the current is going to leak through the inductor, but it's going to leak through the inductor at a very slow rate. So what's happening here is that the capacitor is absorbing the sudden jump in current and allowing it to escape through the inductor at a much slower rate.